the Lord. It's good to see everyone. Amen. Please greet someone before you take your seats. Amen. We're going to read Psalms 91. Hallelujah. Psalms 91. On the overhead if we can. Amen. Well, we all know this by heart now, right? Have you com committed this to your memory? Is it in your spirit? Oh, y'all don't seem like y'all. I say, is it in your spirit this morning? Y'all probably can quote this without me even reading, right? I don't hear you this morning. You know, we should be meditating on this all the time. At least every day, at least once a day. When you wake up in the morning, meditate on Psalms 91. Amen. You say, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my hiding place, my tabernacle. Amen. My sanctuary. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. He says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with, thy, with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Amen. I say, it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels, his angels, charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands and lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, says the Lord, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me. Have you called upon the Lord lately? He said, you shall call upon him and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. So that's the word we've been standing on, and particularly Psalms 91, verse 10. Amen. There shall no evil befall thee, and neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling place. Amen. Put your hands together for the word this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Praise God. Well, praise God. I'm go over the announcements. Uh, don't forget, uh, we have intercessory prayer each Wednesday at 12 noon to 1 o'clock with Pastor Annette. Amen. So you're welcome to join us each Wednesday. Amen. From 12 to 1 for intercessory prayer here in the main sanctuary. Amen. Praise God. All right. Don't forget, you know, Pastor told us uh, Friday night. Let's go to the bookstore and pick up those CDs that he's been teaching, the word that he's been teaching on. Amen. You want to make sure you get that word in your spirit. Amen. 
get that word in your spirit. So stop by the bookstore, pick up the CDs from Wednesday night, Friday night, and as well as this morning. Amen. Praise God. All right. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. Let's receive our pastor at this time. Put your hands together for Pastor Riley. Amen. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning, church. It's so good to see y'all. Let's give God a shout of praise. Amen. Amen. I'll, if y'all, well, I ain't going to say if you. Hey, Evelyn. Did you get your bread? Did you get that loaf of bread? Did you eat it, God? You go home cooking? A little bit. You was home cooking? Yeah. Y'all know Ms. Evelyn can cook. I told her she'd been fronting on me for years. I was supposed to be having a, you know, a plate or something. Try this out. But it's good to see y'all. Uh, let's welcome everybody that's watching us at home right now. Come on, y'all. Amen. Uh, I got some, some work to do. Let's have our seat. I'm going to get right into this. I got some work to do. And uh, I'm going to be teaching the Word of God. And um, I was up early again, early this morning, early again this morning, rather, and um, I'm really excited. So I wanted to get right into the Word of God. Part two from last week, Christ is the head of the church. And, you know, I have been sharing some of this with some of my pastoral friends, and they were like, wow, wow. Uh, friend of mine I called yesterday and he said while you're talking you know I'm line upon line with what you're teaching he said and you line upon line I believe God gave me this revelation and this message for the church in this hour because the church must make a decision who they gonna believe we gotta make a decision who we going to believe so I want to go back to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and verse number 1, because some of the things and the agendas and the propaganda that they're trying to push is not coming in this house, y'all. Um, I'm working on a team of attorneys, if need to be, um, because I ain't no pushover. And I don't mind spending the money to help people. I'm no pushover. Um, I know my biblical rights, and I know once you start infringing upon certain things, then, you know, I man, you're going to have to deal with this. And I know all eyes are on me right now, like never been before, but keep them on me. Because I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. And I'm set for the defense. Um, we're in a very crucial time right now. And the church must believe, they must know in whom we believe. And you got to settle it. If we're going to believe God, let's go with God. And you can't be, you got to be, so, hey, hey, Mother Mays, you got to be such a place that if I got to quit my job because you're harassing me. Because first, Watch this. I'm a citizen of the kingdom. Amen. Everything else is secondary. Okay. And I don't know if we have a lot of believers that are in that place right now. See? Because you're not going to harass me because of what I believe. I have a right to believe that we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. That's biblical. See? So first and foremost, you notice when Paul introduced himself in the writing, he said, Paul, the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, first and foremost. We serve Christ, first and foremost. And everything after that, whatever title you have, and whatever your professionalism is, that's secondary. But the first thing 
I'm a citizen in the kingdom of God. And Christ is the head of the church, universally, corporately. He's the head of the church. And this is why the Lord spoke to me. He said, put your teaching hat back on again. It's time to teach again. So I want us to open our Bibles up to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and verse number 1, where the apostle Paul says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Notice. He said, be ye followers of me. Be ye followers of me, even, watch this, as I also am of Christ. Why did he say that? Because Christ is the head of the church. God has given him the preeminence. He's the first one. So he was appointed heir of all things. He's the head of the church. So now, if Christ is the head of the church, then God, watch this, has given the orders to the Son, watch this, our Christ, our Lord, our King, our Savior, to give to the church. See it? Now, let me say this to you. Because we need to get this illustration and uh, a, a, a picture of what where I'm going. Jesus is the head of the church, right? The Bible says God is the head of Christ, right? When Christ had his earthly ministry, hear me when I tell you this. He said things like, I do nothing of myself. The words I say, they're not mine, but the fathers who sent me. So, so, so he showed us a perfect example of this whole relationship where, watch this, the father is the one who orchestrates everything. Get that revelation. The father, see it? The father. The father. So Jesus was carrying out the orders of his father. And the church should be carrying out the orders of Jesus. If he's the head of the church. You seeing this? If he's the head of the church. Now watch this. I, I talked about the kingdom some last week. In the kingdom of God, it's not a democracy. And one of the things that you're seeing in the end times is democracy is on the rise where the people want to say so. When you take law out, people do anything. I'm for law, y'all. I'm for law. I'm for upholding law. But when it comes to crossing certain lines with me as a believer, it doesn't mean that I disrespect your law. It's just I'm under a higher law. And I must render unto God the things that are God's. Because first and foremost, watch this, it's him. It's him that I obey. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. So now whatever your guidelines or whatever you have say is infringing upon my rights as a believer, then we got to deal with that. We got, now I got to choose. Come on, say amen. Now I got to choose, see it. I got to choose, and I have to make my choice based on what the scripture says. Amen. Amen. See, I got to make my choice based on what the scripture says. And you know what? I may risk, watch this, my relationship with you, but it's okay. And that's what the church got to get back to. If I got to walk alone, I'm going to walk alone. We should say stuff like, we got to get back to that right there. See it? See it? We got to get back to that. So, so he says, follow me even as I am also of Christ. Well, we know Christ is the head of the church. Christ is, God has given him the preeminence. The Father orchestrates everything. Jesus is the administrator, or he gives the orders, watch this, and the Holy Spirit reveals it to the church. I want to start today in 1 Timothy, because I, I want to get into the end time Sunday day, okay? We need to know what the scripture says about the time that we're living in 
so that we know how to handle it, so that we don't be alarmed, and so we know what to do. So I want to deal with 1 Timothy, where Paul is writing a letter to his son Timothy, and he's addressing some things about the latter times, because we're definitely in the latter times. 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verse 1, now the Spirit speaketh how? My God, I know I got more than Tyrone in here and, and somebody else. Now the Spirit speaketh how? Expressly. I want everybody how? Expressly. In other words, the Spirit is speaking explicitly, Absolutely. distinctly, clearly, specifically. The Spirit of God is speaking now. The Spirit of God is speaking. Remember now, he's only going to speak what he's hearing. See, and Jesus said, he shall glorify me. He shall testify of me. So, so he's getting something from Christ to give to the church. And Paul is saying this, that the spirit of God is speaking now expressly. Now watch this. He says that in the latter times or in the later times or in the last days, notice what he says. Ready? Read. Some shall depart. So don't, I, I got to show you this because I don't want you freaking out when you see people that saw it look like they was all in there with God and leave. I ain't talking about just the church. When you see them like, man, you, you don't even sound like you're a believer no more. So don't be shocked. Don't be alarmed. Don't become discouraged. See it? Because these are end time things that we got to deal with in the church. My God, you was on fire for God. Oh, my God. You used to be the first one in the church. My, and you, 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 now you don't know if you believe in God no more. You don't know if Jesus is for, let me tell y'all something. I told somebody this yesterday. If, if you don't, if you're not getting any benefits from serving God, he said, serve Bill. God don't want you to feel like, he ain't forcing you to serve him. God is love. Amen. God is love. See? But if you're not getting benefits out of this, and all you do is complaining about it, go back to the world. Because God doesn't want you serving him. The Bible says serve the Lord with joy. Right? With gladness. Right? 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 So he wants us to look like we're excited about what we're doing for him. Come on, somebody. So he says, in the latter times, men are going to depart. Some are going to depart from the faith. Some, it's going to happen. We've seen it happen in our church. It's going to happen. Never get so close to people that when they go to hell, you're going with them. No, this means you're drawing a line now. Watch this. He says, they shall depart from the faith. <laughs> They're going to depart from the faith. It literally means they're going to rebel against it. <laughs> They'll desert it. They'll fall away from it. <laughs> They'll revoke it. They'll even abandon it. Watch this. And they'll lose their conviction about truth. The Bible says in the last days, this is what we're going to see. Now watch this. This is important. Go, let's read on. Ready? Read. Giving heed to what? Sedu stuff seducing you. And if you're not careful, man, there's a whole lot of information out there that can seduce you. Amen. Come on. It can seduce you. It sounds good, but it's not biblical. Right. See? It's not biblical. See? It sounds real good. But is it scriptural? Is it what the word declares? Come on, y'all say amen up in here. Amen. He says they're going to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of demons. 
They'll even, watch this, leave their reliance upon Christ for salvation. And start searching for something else. Ain't nothing else. Let's go to Acts the fourth chapter. We're going to rightly divide some truth today. There ain't nothing else. I don't know now about that Jesus, you know. I think, you know, the Romans created him. And I don't understand how believers can get sucked up in that mess. No, that's not what the words say. So that's right. Seduction. All right, look at, look at verse number 12. Chapter 4, he says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby what? So let's stop looking. At, that's it right there. Ain't no other name. Jesus. Everybody call out the name Jesus. There ain't no other name. So you see how the enemy in the last days is going to try to seduce people with information. Watch this. It's going to be a lot of renowned people that you looked up to, and you're going to be like, no, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't, no, that ain't. I love you, but that, that ain't, that ain't scriptural. See, that's a doctrine of demons there. Can we go on, y'all? So there's no other name. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. Can I just teach y'all today? Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. My God, my God. We're going to get in this word, y'all. So we don't be alarmed. 2 Thessalonians. The second chapter, verses 1 through 3. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, he's talking about the rapture, that you be not soon shaken in mind, this is important, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is what? Amen. This is important. It's at hand, y'all. Let me tell you all something. Let me just insert something for you to write. God will never allow sin to overtake the earth. Because the earth is the Lord's. And before that happens, we gone, we up out of here. But he will never let that happen. Why? Because all the earth is mine, he said. Now, watch this. He says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. See it? Man, we've been hearing about Jesus long enough. That day he ain't coming. He coming. He's coming. He said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away what? First. We saying that, right? Except there comes a what? Falling away first. First. Now, watch this. Let me tell you what the devil will use through a falling away. Watch this. Look at, look at, look at, look at your daughter and say, what's going on? See, now look at somebody and say, what, 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 what's going on? Where are these people going? It's called a falling away. See? It's called a fall. No, you, what you got to do, you got to stay in place. See? It? When they get out of place, you got to stay in place. See it? You heard me? When they get out of place, you got to do what? Stay in place. See? Because I won't be a part of that bunch. But there's going to be a falling away first, he says. <laughs> and that men of sin be revealed the son of what? Okay, so, so, so we're in the end times. And I want you all to understand where we're at. We're in the latter days right now. We're in the latter time. So don't be alarmed. Don't be surprised by nothing. When you see it happen, so I guess you're a part of the scripture then. See? Because I ain't going to be a part of that falling away. <laughs> Y'all better hear me right now. <laughs> I, I ain't going to be a part of that falling away. I'm saved to the bone. 
So what, what happens? They will abandon, watch this, what they once believed. They will abandon what they once believed in. What they once believed in. This is called apostasy. The church, why, this is called apostasy. So church, we're seeing this right now. We're seeing more of it. Apostasy. How did that, you believe in God and all this, and you believe in all this, you believe, and now you don't believe it no more. Apostasy. See, and that's happening in the church right now. Can I get three amens? Amen. 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 Okay. So we see this, all right? We must know what the word of God says about this, so that we don't be caught off guard and be alarmed. We got to know what the word says. Because you'll have a lot of like, you'll have a lot of questions like about things like, well, why is this? Why? It's in the word, baby. It's in the word. See it? It's in the word. So I'm not going to be alarmed by what I see. I'm not going to be alarmed by this stuff. Why? Because it's in the word. And there's going to be a great falling away first. See it? It's going to be a great fall. People, people who once believed in God, I don't know if I believe in them no more. See? I don't know if I believe, I don't know if I believe that about Christ no more. See? Because I done went and got a hold of some stuff. You done went and got a hold of some garbage. See? That's messing your mind up. See? And this is why Paul said, follow me even as I so am a follower of Christ. We'll be safe with that. Because Christ is the head of the church. Once again, I said it last week, and not CDC. Amen. Quiet now. Not our federal government. Okay? Not our health department. Not the who. Christ is the head of the church. I even notice now that they're putting in their stipulations, in their guidelines. This is what they're saying now. Because, well, I said, y'all, I don't know if y'all familiar with Jay Sekulow. He don't play. He's an attorney for churches. Now they got an addendum in there. These are only our guidelines. We don't want to infringe upon your commandment, your commit, you know, the first commandment, you know, your freedom. I heard President Trump say, he said, uh, they said, well, are you going to mandate mass? He said, no. He said, why? Because people have freedom of choice. Come on, come on. We ain't trying to make that a new norm in this church. That ain't going to happen. Okay. That ain't going to happen. Amen. You know, if you got something going on with you, you wearing a mask, that's fine with me, okay? I ain't never said not to, okay? You, you having some challenges. Um, we've had people come in here all kind of times, man. One sister was sitting over there about a year ago. She had something going on with her. She had a mask on. I, that stuff don't bother me. I'm going to teach the word. That's right. Amen. But I believe, in, I believe that your faith is stronger than a mask. That's right. But if you're going to wear one, some things going on, I ain't got no problem with that, y'all. The only thing I want us to get a hold of is the truth. So that we don't operate, you see. And that's fine. And don't make people feel indifferent, okay? We love people. Okay, now, let's get back to this because I got some places to go. I got to deal with the veganitis too. I'm going to deal with all that. Because we're in the last days. It's amazing how people can, can study more, and you know so much about that as a believer, but you don't know no word. I don't get that. I don't get that. You know why? Because man's attempt is always trying to do it without God. But you need God. Oh, you need God, and you need the Savior. In times like these, we need a Savior. So, they're going to abandon something that they once believed in. What else are we going to see in the latter times? We're going to see an increase of lawlessness in the land. We're seeing that right now. An increase of lawlessness is in the land right now. <laughs> Democracy increasing where people feel that they can do whatever they want to do. We don't need no law. Yes, you do. Let's go to Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29, 18. Y'all know I'm coming from the word, don't you? It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. 
Now, one place says, without law, the people cast off restraints. I'm all for let's deal with who's wrong, but still stay right. Okay, you had a couple of officers did stuff wrong, but let's stay for what's right. Well, defund. We don't want the police no more. It's crazy. We don't want law no more. But that's democracy on the uprise right now. And what comes with that is lawlessness. Now, here's the thing. Something that I believe that's, that's biting us right now, when you have democracy, it's by the people, it's for the people. So if you get enough people to sign a petition, how you going to barricade a whole police precinct? Oh, I, I told you, I couldn't be a police officer. I couldn't, I couldn't, because I'd be Rambo. I'm just telling you, I ain't going, I'm like, Doc, I ain't going down. I know what they're doing down there. I'm going down there with a dag on all kinds of stuff. Rockets, everything going to be on me. I'll be like, I, I, I'm going to call y'all one time. That's all I'm doing. I ain't going up in there because I see how y'all killing one another. I ain't got a chance. The Bible says, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Happy is he. So we can't become a, a society of lawlessness, see it? In Jeremiah, it says, woe be unto him that say that evil is good. And good now is evil. Because anytime you straight up with people, you evil. See? You tell them the truth, that you evil, see it? So let's look at this in the scripture some more. Are y'all getting something out of this? So lawlessness, I want you to write this down, is a state of disorder. Oh, God. Lawlessness is a state of disorder due to disregard. It's a state of disorder due to disregard. See it? Disregard for what? The law, rather due to disregard for the law. Let's go to Matthew. Jesus says something about this in 24th chapter. My God, I got 34 minutes, and I'm going to take all of them. Because this your good here. This your good here. Now, <laughs> look at Matthew's gospel, the 24th chapter, verse number 12. It says, but because iniquity. Now, another definition for iniquity is lawlessness. But because of lawlessness, do y'all see that? Shall abound. The love of many shall what? People going to go cold. The love of many shall wax cold. So people are going to go cold. The love of many shall wax cold. See it? Because of lawlessness. See it? Because of not knowing right from wrong. Watch this. Ain't trying to know right from wrong. Ain't trying to walk no straight path. I want to do my own thing. Okay? And whatever you feel, just do it. See it? Y'all heard them statements? You know? I was watching last night. That's why I'm very uncomfortable with people who come in I don't know with a mask on. Y'all seen how I was looking at somebody up in there Wednesday night. I was like, do, am I going to have to come back out here with something on my ankle? Because I, I, I'm very, I, I, I was like, I know that so-and-so, but I ain't never seen them before. So I was teaching like this. Because I was trying to see who was behind it. Do you know that in New York, crime rate has went up 270%? Mass. Now, little kids, you ready for this? are acting like they grown with masks on, putting wigs on like they grandmama going buying liquor at the store. And watch this. The people on the news thought it was funny. 
until, watch this, they start having accidents and killing themselves. They're dressing up like grandma and like they're older now and they buying booze. Lawlessness, y'all. That's where the church is at. The world is at, rather. And the church got to make sure we keep it out. Amen. Give me three amens. Amen. Amen. So he says, because of this lawlessness, I feel, I feel for people who didn't grow up in a good home environment. Let me tell you why. Because it is our responsibility as parents to train our children in the way that they should go. When you see children disrespecting authorities, that came from the home. That wasn't established. See? That wasn't established. See? And I feel, because, you know, if they don't really have a good environment where they can be taught, and watch this, and they ain't going to church, how are they going to know? How are they going to know? Okay, so let's get back to this. So we said iniquity is lawlessness, right? It's also great wickedness. <laughs> great wickedness. Great wickedness. Now watch this. And it happened, what he's talking about here is it's happening to people, watch this, who was once great people. Man, they were great people, man. How you, how you, can, can I tell y'all something? Y'all supposed to say, yeah. yeah. Friend of mine told me this the other day. He said, man, he said, we even have in church. He said, I'm seeing my people on Facebook, they partying and everything. That's what happened when you stay away too long. When Moses was away, they started melting down the gold. Because we're not designed that way. We're designed to be in fellowship. He said, man, he said, man, they doing what I'm saying, you know, they cussing all kind of stuff. I said, no, you probably just saying it. No, you catch that one. Because <laughs> sometimes situations bring out of you what's been in you. It's just magnified. See? Give me a better amen. Now, can we move on? Because I got, I got some more work to do. Okay. So, look at somebody and say, we've got to stay with this thing. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because the scriptures say, he that endured to the end shall be saved. So, we've got to stay with this thing. Now, let's look back at 1 Timothy because I want to spend probably the rest of my, my um, moments here. First Timothy. And let's go back to verse number two. Speaking lies. Erroneous. That's really what it means. Being very erroneous. I mean, what you talking about? Speaking lies. This saying all kinds of stuff. Speaking lies. In what? What? In what? I can't hear your church in what? Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Watch this. Very deceitful. That's what it means. Very deceitful. Liars. Liar, liar. Catch on fire. <laughs> deceitful. False. We see a lot of that in the church today. False. But now this is the latter times. See it? Their conscience is seared. You know what that means? They no longer have a conviction about wrong. Man, can I tell you something? Who the father loves, he chasing. I, man, I love when the Lord be doing with me. I do something wrong. That means I'm born again. I still got the heart of God. The day you don't have a conscience, you might need to check your born again status. So he says, this is what's going to happen. Do, are, we, are we seeing this right now? The, the, their conscience is seared with a hot iron. They don't bother me no more. See? 
Don't bother me no more. See? It don't bother me no more. See? To me, that's dangerous, y'all. Because if you don't respect God, I ain't got a chance with you. That's dangerous. See? See? John Hagee used to tell his people who came in for counseling, he used to do this. He'd put his Bible on the, on the thing and say, all right, now, do you believe in this? He said, because if you don't, I can't help you. Because if you don't believe in this, I can't help you. See? I don't know what you want if you don't want this. Okay, so, so, so they have their conscience seared with a hot iron. Lose that conviction about wrong. Now, how about this? Forbidden to marry. There's no need. How many of y'all know that cohabitation is on the uprise right now? But need I remind you what the scripture says in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verse number 4? Marriage is honorable. God ordained marriage. But he says in the latter time, y'all know a lot of people that even uh, the world looks up to now. They ain't married. Cohabitation is on the uprise. We know there ain't no need for us to get married. We love one another. Well, get married then. Your dog got a license. Your dog got a tag. Your dog got something that say y'all won. And then you turn around and leave a dog an inheritance. Y'all know I'm talking right. Leave everything to the dog. Where you going to go? Whoop, 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 whoop. Let's move on, because I got, I got some work I got to do, y'all. All right. Look at somebody say, he talking right. He's talking right. Okay, so, so he says, forbidden to do what? Yeah. Woo! Cohabitation is on the upride. My God. How about this one? Let's go. Let's move on to the next one. Forbidden to marry and commanding to abstain from what? Meat. Really? <laughs> really? Don't eat meat? Don't eat me. Don't. Let me tell you something. I ain't got a problem with if you say I ain't eating meat right now, but don't try to think, make that thing spiritual. <laughs> you just ain't eating meat. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a vegan. Do you even know what's behind that? It's amazing how we can get so burst in the wrong information. I'm talking to the church now. Watch this, it's important. Woo! Abstaining from me, I got to stay there for a minute. Because I had, I, I told Annette this morning, I said, it's a shame before God. She made this meatloaf yesterday. I said, it's a shame before God. The Lord woke me up at 3 this morning. And I'm thinking about that meatloaf. The Lord, I'm like, you better get your behind that room and, and listen to me and write some notes down. That's why I'm trying to hurry up. Trying to get home to the meatloaf. You ever be thinking about a meal before you eat? You already know hours in advance how you're going to do it. But now, the meatloaf was beef. She don't eat beef. But I tear them boy up. <laughs> Moving right along, y'all. Ah, shit, I felt something, too, on it. And, man, I might get me some turkey wings and mix it with it, too. Hey, yo! Shut up, y'all, man. Paul said, if eating meat offends my brother, I won't be around him then. I'm going to eat my meat. Now, watch this. But right away till they leave. Watch this. Don't eat meat. I said, really? I'm going to show you something. God created meats to be received with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Stick with me before you throw me out. Because I got something coming down your alley, Sally. Can I watch this? He says, for every creature of God is bad. Good. 
and nothing to be refused? If it be received with, watch this, y'all. He takes us right back to the word, for it is sanctified. You're clean to the word, baby. Somebody might be trying to serve you a bad piece of meat, but once you pray over it, it's sanctified by the word of God. I'm going to tear up that me. I'm not helping anybody. Well, you know, I'm a vegetarian. Do you even know what's behind all that? It's like telling somebody I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> we ain't got no business laying no claim on those zodiac signs. We new creatures in Christ. What, you a Libra? I'm a Pisces. <laughs> Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Can we put our hands together and give God some praise? <laughs> now, now let, let, let's, let's move on because I got to show you some more marvelous things. So eating meat is good. You know, if you're laying off of it for time, whatever, I'm just not eating meat right now. You know, I have my moments where, you know, I, I don't feel like eating meat. Right. You know, I believe your body will talk to you. Right. But it ain't going to be for long for me. Right. I'd be like, I ain't eating meat for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Man, I ate so much salad one time. I said, ain't no rabbit. I need me some meat. I was like on this kick where I wasn't eating meat for long. I said, man, I ain't no rabbit. Charity was so glad when I we was on this fast for a long time. She, she was so glad when I did some country cooking. Charity was waiting for it to finish. Amen. But don't try to make something that's not scriptural spiritual. That's what I want to say. Let's move on. Because y'all, 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 y'all a good crowd. Thank y'all for coming out today. Okay. So now that we know uh, the truth about me, see, now this is, this is important. Watch what he says. Watch what he says. He says, for it is sanctified, see it? But back up, back up to verse 3. I, I, I don't want to leave, I don't want to leave this out. I was about to say it, but you got to understand. Forbidden to marry, commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and we know the truth. Now, let's go down uh, to verse number six. We got some reading to do, okay? Read with me. One, two, three, read. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine where thou hast obtained. So we should be putting people, encouraging people right now. He says, but refuse, watch this, profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather unto what? God. Y'all remember when I, was, I taught on this about, you know, how to, how to uh, boost up your immune system God's way? Now watch this. Verse number eight. He says, for bodily exercise profit a little, it profit little. But godliness is profitable unto what? Let's open your mouth and give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Having promise of the life that now is, and watch this, and of that which is to come. Okay? Let's, let's go to verse number nine. Ready? Read. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception. For therefore we both labor and I want to deal with this. Suffer what? Why? That's where the church is at right now. Y'all still going to church? Because we trust in the living God. Now we suffer reproach. Can I talk to you, church? Because we still want to honor the scriptures. Now we suffer reproach. See? 
We're going to make them look like they're a reproach in this city. I got news for you. You better back off. Because this is the work of God. And you can't stop this. Can't stop me. That's right in there. But therefore, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that what? Go to the next verse. This is powerful. These things command and teach. These things command and teach. How many of y'all getting something out of this? So now that we want to honor God, now that we want to do what's right by him, we got to suffer reproach. God. God. Church, we suffer reproach, excuse me, church, we suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. Now, let's go to 2 Timothy. It gets better now. The third chapter. Am I doing all right? This know also, he's still talking. He said, I'm going to add this to what I shared with you aforetime. In the last days, perilous times shall come. Dangerous. I don't care how dangerous it gets, God is with us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Paul said, I was cast down, but I wasn't forsaken. Persecuted. Now, this is important. He says in verse 2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. We seeing this, y'all. Let's keep going. Without natural affection, truce breakers, covenant breakers, false accusers. We see that. False accusers. Oh, they just accuse you of something they ain't know. Really? How do you know that happened? Amen. See? Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. People just haul off and say anything about you nowadays. Keep on. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Did that scripture say that? Yes, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Read on. Having a, here we go right here. Y'all know this season, it telling on people. You have a form of, but denying you know what was so funny? You know, I don't normally uh, say things, you know, because I'm like, um, the latest one is that I had to close the church down because me and Thomas had COVID. <laughs> they said the church ain't no more. Can I tell you, sometimes that stuff starts right in here. But, oh, God, we about to pray it out of here. Because we can't let division and discord be among the brethren. That's not kingdom, y'all. Since when now we can't tell testimonies and now you frightened? Come on, church, let's talk. Well, you had that long line, all them people. You don't know what they was up here for. And whatever they had is gone. They can't touch. It's just like we should do in the old church. They cast a demon out. Call on Jesus. It's going to get me. No, it can't. Because when we cast out, it goes. That spirit is not contagious to you when it's cast out. There's a lot of work, church, we got to do right now. So we can't even tell testimony with somebody. Oh, no. Oh, see, I knew it. No, let's applaud God. That's right. See? See, that's my God that did that. And, I said, and I may have been feeling a little attacked, but I know I got healings on the way with me too. See? But that's, oh. Y'all, 
we the state of the church got to change, y'all. It's got to change. The Bible talks about how Jesus walked among the multitudes. And there were many that came that were sick with diamonds diseases, and he healed them all. That's us. With this stripes, I don't know about you, but I'm healed. Let me move on. I got 11 minutes. Hallelujah. So, he says that they're having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Now, don't get me wrong. I'll be the first to tell y'all, this has been a challenge for the, everybody. Not just the world, but the church too. But what the church got to do, the first thing we got to do when something go down, God. Everything else is second. God. See? First and foremost. See? Because y'all y'all, y'all even know me, especially staff around here. Y'all be going through something. I'll fix your concoction. I'm going to pray with you, give you a concoction. If I need to send you home, you're going home. Y'all know I operate. Go home. Get you some rest. He don't look good. Go home. Y'all know I am. You see it? Uh, y'all know some of them laughing right now. I'll come in there in a minute. Carlos, go home. You don't look, you look tired today. Go home. Yes, I am. Go home. And we'll pay you. Amen. Amen. Y'all, this our office been closed for two weeks. And my people still got paid. I wasn't closed because of COVID. I just wanted them to rest. Because we've had a lot going on. I don't know why we won't tell that to people. Those that's with me. No, oh, they ain't pastor. They ain't how pastor operate. Pastor will send you on a weekend vacation when I tire on. I will send you away. Right. Amen. On a weekend? Yep, if you need it. I'd be like, you need to, y'all need to go. Because I believe that that I believe you need to rest for. See it? Y'all yeah. know how many people I done paid for yeah. going on vacation and trips? Amen. 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 But why y'all don't tell it sometimes? Like Jesus told them, man, don't go and tell how great a thing the Lord have done for thee. Go and tell. See? I don't know me in a minute. I'll send somebody on and pay for the whole vacation. That's what we do. See? That's what we do. <laughs> Y'all know that? Send you away on a Sunday. One time I sent the all the pack one time, right? The whole crew one time to New York for a weekend. Did it more than one time. I do stuff like that. That's why you can't stop me. I'm a blessed man. I got a lot of seed in the ground. I love being a blessing to people, y'all. And I'm not, you know, I just want you to understand that, you know, if I feel like, you know, you need not be here today, you need to go home. Take a couple of days. You know, and that'll come to me. She'll sometimes put a RTO form on my desk. I said, I'm going to just give them that. Let them have it. When they ain't got the time, I said, let them have it. What you said in that? Many times. That's what we do, y'all. Okay, let's 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 I wanna I wanna get into this and show you some other things, okay, as we're bringing it to a Krispy Kreme. That sound good, don't it? <laughs> now notice what he says. I like this. Let's skip down to verse 14. Notice what Paul says, in spite, let's, let's deal with verse number 12 first. Yea, all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer what? That's in time. And see, sometimes people don't want to be identified with you when you're being persecuted. Come on, y'all. 
Come on, y'all. You know, sometimes as members, what y'all need to do is go on Facebook and comment on something that I got on there. So that's right. We open. But sometimes people don't want to be identified with you. But you'll comment on everything else with everybody else because I see your stuff. Well, my God, they over here giving out this. I'd be like, man, you know what our church just did? We done fed over 6,000 people. Where y'all been at? <laughs> See? Yeah. It's amazing how people can magnify the wrong and overlook the right. Watch this. I'm gonna, let me bring it in. He says, but evil men, wow, and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving. Do y'all see this? This is the, the last days, y'all. But notice what he says, in spite of, watch this, in spite of all those things he just listed, guess what he says in verse 14? Continue coming to church. Continue praying. Continue thou in all things which thou hast learned. And has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned that my God is good. Continuing. He ain't say stop. You mean even fellowshipping? Yeah, let's go to Hebrews 10 chapter. Let's deal with this for a minute in closing. He says, continue down all things. Well, all that's going on with threats, men shall be loved. He said, look, continue this. See? Don't stop. Hallelujah. Uh, look at Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Remember he said, continue. Continue. Continue down all things. See? He, he didn't say stop. Come on, y'all, let's talk. He said, he said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another. Watch this. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. We, in other words, he said, let's come together. Let, we should be having more gatherings. Amen. It's, it's too much hurt for me. I tell you what he said. He says, all the more. See? All the more. All the more. See? Now, I'm going to show you something in closing. Because, you know, I like doing cross-references on stuff. I, I love it to uh, help me get a hold of it just a little clearer, okay? Let's back up to uh, 1 Timothy, third chapter. Oh, glory to God. Because one thing that we have to understand is this, that we are the church of the living God. First and foremost, we are the church of the living God. My citizenship is in heaven, okay? Now, verse number 15, he says, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how to, thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the what? Living God. The pillar. Do y'all see that? It's the what? Pillar. And ground. So we're supposed to be coming together, known as the house of God, local assembly. See, you have general, then you have the local assembly. So Paul, remember Paul said, continue thou in all things. Now go to, go to um, and I'm going to close with this, uh, Jude. Jude. And I saw this this morning. I'd never seen this before. Jude, if you're in the second chapter, you're not in Jude. <laughs> 18, there's a lot in this whole uh, book here of Jude. But I just want to take some scriptures out. See, ya. He says, how that they told you there should be markers. See, he's talking about end times, too. In the what? 
markers, scopers, are going to be in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. This is important. Verse 19, these be they who separate. That's a cross-reference from Hebrews 10, 25. These be they who separate themselves from assembling together. Sensual, having not the spirit. That's why I say, I, I had to go back. When people tell me, well, I ain't got to go to church, I don't know if you're saved. I don't know if you're born again. Talking like that, because that's unscriptural. He says they're having not the spirit. They separate themselves. Man, I, I don't have time. Me and God. Uh-uh. That's unscriptural. The Bible says in the book of Acts, in the second chapter, verse 46, and they're continuing in one accord daily in the temple. Trying to get some of y'all to come to church two times a month is a reward. But, but he, said, he said continuing daily in the temple. Daily? But now watch this. No, let's go back to Jude. You know, I, got, I, I, I just, these be they who separate themselves, sensual having not the spirit. Now, notice how he goes into verse 20. This is why he goes into verse 20 this way. He says, but you, beloved, keep building yourselves up. Don't separate yourselves. On your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. See, You stay built up. Don't you separate yourself. See? Hallelujah. Christ is the head of the church, y'all. Not CDC, not our local officials, not our state official. Christ is the head of the church. Now, I want to end with Ephesians. I said this one, but let me give you Ephesians. The Lord's dealing with me so strong about what I'm teaching right now. He's the head of the church. I showed you last week. Well, we have been teaching this thing about the laws of the land, Rome. That's not what that meant. He, Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter, is about the laws that God gave to Moses to his people. See, it wasn't civil law. God's laws are spiritual. See, it's just we got to get in this word, y'all, and get our minds renewed. Because we have too much of the world's information that's dominating. That's not good. We're born of God. See? Now, look at this in um, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the fifth chapter, and we'll end here. Verse 23. Christ is the head of the church. And we need to understand that. For the husband is the head of the wife. For the husband is the head of the wife. For the husband is the head of the wife. Amen. Some of y'all, you ain't got to drill that. This is for you. We might have to because you get it. Amen. The husband is the head of the wife. Amen. Even as Christ is the head of what? Church. Oh. CDC. The who? Health administration. You know, I believe if we would learn how to uphold God's law, the word, like we try to uphold with everything else, we'll get somewhere. Right. And we're not advocating any of that. I'm just saying you got to know what is written. See? And this is what we hold fast to, what is written, okay? I have no, I have no challenge with complying with you, but when it comes to this, I can imagine, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Bad, Bad Riley going. <laughs> no, we, we ain't got no problem with you, King, doing all that other stuff you told. But right here, your government telling us to bow, we can't do that. 
We ain't got Daniel, da King Darius, you know I ain't got no problem with your government. Your, but uh, you say, I can't pray? I got to pray. I got to pray. Well, why didn't we tell them to obey the laws of the land? Church got to know what we're standing for right now. If we don't stand, they're going to try to change church. But that devil is a liar. And you're going to have to make a decision. And you're going to be a coward or you're going to get some backbone. Some people just got neck bone. No, you kind of have to make a decision. I ain't ashamed. You might get ridiculed from close family members. <laughs> but I'm standing. You know, it's reading this article. <laughs> You know, well, you know, we just, we just want to praise uh, New York and because, you know, they did all the things you're supposed to do. You're lying. No, they didn't. They let people march, protest with no mask, no nothing, no distancing. All of us did it. I mean, every state did it. It's like, it was like the weeks we lost control. And right now, it's another breakout. So it's okay to go out, march, protest, chant. And nobody's busting those crowds up. Come on, can I talk to y'all? Can I talk to you? Nobody's busting those crowds up and say, hey, they ain't no, man, they ain't got no mask on. Nobody's doing that. Can I talk to you? Like, well, we praised them because, no, they didn't. They, their crime rate up 275% right now. Amen. Amen. It's amazing how we say stuff. Like, God, nah, that ain't. Even here, you know, we let people protest, march, tow up stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Baby, I ain't got no problem with you wanting to get a little something off the chest, but don't break in my stove. Good dog, I got to eat too. See, lawlessness. See? That's why I know that government is not God's government. Because in the kingdom of God, there's unity. In the kingdom of God, there's harmony. In the kingdom of God, there's agreement. And in the kingdom of God, it's one rule by God. You don't get a vote in the kingdom of God. Church, we got to know the kingdom, how it operates. I think it was Plato. He said out of all of the forms of government, he believed that monarchy was the best because it's ruled by one man but not an evil man. The kingdom of God is ruled by a man. He started with Adam. Come on now. Then he brought Jesus. Come on, come on. But the good thing about the kingdom of God, there's somewhat tiny in it as well because he allows us to share in his rulership. <laughs> Come on, y'all. He allows us to share in his rulership. See? So, you know, we need to understand that the church is in a class all by itself. And this is what I would say to the world and those who are opposing the church right now, back off. Because you don't want God to deal with you. Back off. Because in that same chapter in Jude, he talks about coming with judgment. We got to know this is God's work, not the work of a man. This is God's work. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, did you get something out of the day? Yeah. Amen. I want to. Stop. Take a moment to honor God with the tithe and the offering. 
I'm enjoying this series, y'all. You know, those that are watching, you can join in right now online. Praise God. Get your tie, you off. You need to blow on that envelope, go ahead. Praise God. I said praise God. You enjoy this? Christ is the head of the church, y'all. to dishonor Christ, we dishonor God. I says, for you to dishonor, I says, the ministry gift that Christ gave to the church is to dishonor Christ. That's how this work, y'all. He said, whosoever receiveth you, receiveth me. He that receiveth me, receiveth the Father that sent me. That's just the way it is. give him those that are watching online hallelujah praise God the Lord is good y'all So if you're ready, come on, bring your, your tithe, your offering, and put it on the altar, you know. Good to see you, Sister Colette. We know all y'all was fine. Y'all just had 14 days of rest. How was that with your mama? you too. You ain't crying. Come on, I miss you so much. I ain't seen one tear. Oh, we go over this, you know, we praise the Lord. Anybody happy? Yes. Well, let's act like it. up to something that's bigger than you can imagine right now. Hallelujah. You know, you could remain standing and um, you still bring your offering, you know, put it in a sack. I know it's a lot. And um, you got anything in there you want to say? You good? Josh, you got anything you want to say? You want to share any of your revelations? Somebody text Josh. You know, Josh is a trip. You know that, don't you? They text Josh. I just want to caution you about coming to church. God, Josh, let me tell you something. I'm following my man of God. the end of that. No. No. Powerful, ain't it? He said, yeah, I'm following my man of God. No. You know, the last three weeks, I'm going to give you a little bit of 
of transparency. It was very difficult for me. My uncle, you know, cancer had spread all through his body. The only uncle that I have left on my father's side. I saw it coming, but I didn't want it to come. You see? What I mean by that, I saw the decline. I saw the giving up. I saw, like, the negative words. But yet, in spite of that, we're still supposed to pray. That was difficult. I'm teaching at the church out there, and Thomas knew what was going on. I said, okay, Lord, I stopped him. I said, okay, Lord, I knew that. He said, I knew God was telling you to go to the house. I go to the house. He was there, frail. You know, while we looked out at the things that are seen, he's lost from, he done gone from 185 to like the 120, 130. And I'm looking at him and wanting to see him in no other way but being healed. So I go to the house after service. We all go over there and I pull him to the side and I said, oh, what you want to do? You want to live or die? He said, I want to fight. I said, all right, then what we fighting with? What scriptures you got? I need to know what we standing on. Well, shared and I shared some more scriptures with him. I said, do you pray in tongues? I said, you got to pray in tongues. So we prayed with him and for the first night he had rested. He hadn't been resting a long time. So we called then the net the next day check on him. I would call and do confessions with him. And I tell you, I, I didn't, I saw it coming, but I didn't want to see it. So when we get the phone call, about four o'clock in the morning, then, Wednesday morning, I knew, I knew, I knew. But you know, one of them things like, I don't want that, but I knew. And she said, uh, we're going to go out there. I said, there's no need. I said, he ain't coming back. I said, we'll just talk to Auntie a little later on, you know. You know, when you're talking to people, someone has passed they were together for 43 45 years she's blaming herself oh if I just got up that morning I said mm -mm. he normally would get you up and tell you what he's doing I said he didn't miss that time I said you know why he was tired of that battle was so difficult and challenging for me. You know, cancer had spread all through his body. God had healed him here in 2015. Y'all know the testimony. Somehow, I don't know what happened. But as I began to talk to my aunt, and she was like, you know, he had been talking to me about dying for a long time. And as we're preparing, that Saturday morning, <laughs> to go down to the, she had a grave site ceremony. We get a phone call, Sister Alice Epps. I'm like, Lord. I'm like, Lord, you're gonna have to help me get through this day. I said, no, this, it can't be true. Yeah, her heart stopped yesterday. I said, no. It's Saturday morning. Oh, God. So we 
we trying to get in touch with people but not say anything because I got to stay focused on the graveside ceremony. So we go out. And there's a point I'm getting to right now. We go out. Ten minutes away from leaving, and my daughter Charity asked Annette, "So what's anybody heard from Sister Allison?" So Annette says, uh, "Ralph," uh, and I look at Charity, just look, and her eyes start getting watery. I like, is she gone? Thomas is driving. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> I'm good, y'all. <clears throat> I ain't got nothing. I'm just waiting for some water. <laughs> you better smile when you bring that water up here. <clears throat> I gotta put something in the tank. So, let me say this to you. <clears throat> Come back. Riding in the Jeep. So I want to go back to church. Thomas is driving. He gets to crying. He's angry, you know. I'm in the lobby. Listen to me when I tell you all this. And the Lord says to me, What you gonna do now? Are you in a battle? And as long as you're on the news, your uncle done passed away, a member done passed away, you don't know what's going on. Right there in the lobby. You know, I'm comforting him. The Lord said, what you gonna do? He literally asked me this question, do you still want to do this? I looked at my family, and I looked around in the lobby, and I said, yeah, Lord, you called me to do this. And if you call me to do this, your grace is sufficient. Because I'm going, y'all. Sometimes you will never know what you can handle until you tap into the grace of God. And then, last Sunday morning, get a phone call from Eureka. Terry Walker passed. I said, God, God. I'm like, God. And then she's just crying, hysterically. I mean, just, ooh, I'm trying to talk to her. And finally, I said to my wife, I said, all right, look, 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 look. I don't want to talk no more right now. I need to get somewhere and pray. I get in prayer. And I get strength, see? Because you ain't got to ask God for strength. He is your strength. So I get in there, man. And I come out here and I preach. And I'm saying all that to say this. I said to the Lord yesterday, thank you. Because your grace is sufficient. It's sufficient. See? Then, you know, you gotta understand this. This, what makes this easy is the grace of God. But outside of that, you quit, man. You quit. I mean, you will, you will flat out just quit. Quit. <laughs> See? But you can't. See? You can't. I said, Lord, you know, I said, thank you for bringing me through these three weeks that were so difficult. My son asked me a question at the table the other night. He said, I know this had to be difficult for you. You know, she said, you know, mom was praying. Wednesday noonday, she started praying for you in the noonday service. 
He said, I said, it's got to be difficult. I said, you know, Thomas, that's me pulling my pants. I'm about to say something. I said, I've been here before. I said, I was in a fellowship where three people died in one week. Remember that, Sister Moo? Her son and the daughter, all of them died in one week. And I had to be the one that did uh, the exaltation at the funeral, three caskets. We received a phone call early that morning. Pastor's wife said, we need y'all to get over to the house. They said, body on the front lawn. They said, and dead, but we rebuked that. And one is on the way to the hospital. They're trying to resuscitate. One is uh, already in, in, unconscious. And so that week, see, God will prepare you for things to come. And I mean, we had a high service. That thing was so high. Ooh. But it was three coffins in one service. Three coffins. So God prepares you for things. See? Sometimes you don't know why. You're in certain training and this has happened. That he's preparing you for something. And that's what the Lord reminded me of. Huh? Oh, I'm, right, I'm, I'm going to tell and God prepares you for things. Am, am I helping y'all? And you don't know why sometimes you're going through what you're going through. But he's going to use that in the future. <laughs> um, and then with all of this, I was sharing with some of the staff, I had a dream, y'all. Well, not dream, I kept seeing snake heads. Normally when I see snakes, some type of demonic activity going on, or somebody around me ain't right. But this time, all I saw was the heads. It was four heads. And y'all remember that night I was leaving prayer? I said, now let's strike the head of the snake. God told me that. He said, watch this, that they form no body. Because all I saw was heads. It was four of them. See? Four of them. Four heads, snake heads, brown as black. I still remember it. And I kept, I saw, and the Lord said, the Lord said, we were leading prayer. I was in here leading prayer. He said, now strike the head of the snakes. And it was four of them, four heads. Four. Four. You know what I said? There ain't gonna be a fourth one. Did y'all get that revelation? There ain't gonna be a fourth one. It's four snake heads. Only, only thing I can tell y'all right now, the way God is dealing with me, it's a whole nother level. If I tell y'all this, y'all, y'all please understand this. I saw Kanye West coming here two months ago to start his campaign. I just never said nothing. He's going to be here tonight. I saw it two months ago because he wants to run for the president. <laughs> but I saw it. I saw him coming here to start a campaign. I saw it. When you start operating on, on different levels, you get access to that spirit world like never before. You start seeing stuff. So this is what I want to say to the church here. Be encouraged. We are fine. We're just experiencing a little turbulence. See, when our people started getting attacked, y'all, you know, going, getting tested, I say they healed. That's why I kept, they, they healed. I, can I tell you something? Can I be transparent? I was like, who done brought something up in here? We know it was an attack on the devil, of the devil, but it still ain't going to prosper. Dr. Layton called me up. He said, man, I want to say something to you. He said, don't stop. Called him back the next day, a couple of days. I said, I need to tell you something. 
I said, well, you called me the other day. Can you, can you talk to me? I said, you have no idea what I was going through. He said, I knew what you was going through. God showed me. He said, don't stop. He said, I need to tell you this because you was the only one down there standing like that. He said, what make you think the devil wasn't going to come out for y'all? He said, they were trying everything with you. News, rumors, everything with you. He said, but you would. He said, I was bragging on you. He said, my boy down there, he ain't never closed. And we ain't going to close. the head of the church. Hallelujah. That's where we're at. So, you know, buckle up. Brace yourself. Stay armored. Because this plane going to land, baby. We may be experiencing a little bit of turbulence right now. But this plane going to land. Are you hearing me, somebody? Give God a shout of praise, won't you? Hallelujah. Well, you know, that's all I got for today. You know, Wednesday night is going to be right. We'll get back into this thing about living by faith through the word of God. You know, I love y'all so much.